you are the principal of Socorro Middle School, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, tell me a little bit about yourself and your school. Uh, well, I've been at Socorro Middle School for about a year and a half now. I started in December of 2014. Uh, prior to that, I was an assistant principal at a middle school, Montwood Middle School here in our district, as well as at America's High School um, for a couple of years as well. And prior to that, I was with the El Paso uh, Independent School District as both an assistant principal at an elementary, as well as an elementary district science coach. And then prior to that, I was actually here in the Socorro District as a teacher uh, at Helen Ball. I taught fifth grade. Okay. So I've had the experience of elementary, middle school, and high school uh, as far as uh, teaching and then as an administrator in the middle school and Great. high school. Good. Okay, tell us, uh, where, where are you from originally? Uh, well, originally I was born in Los Angeles and I moved here when I was nine. Uh, but my dad's actually from El Paso. Uh, my mom's from Chihuahua. And so my parents have roots here. So when we were ready to come back, my, my dad missed his family and his his city. So we moved back to El Paso. Okay, great. Good. okay tell us about your school. Well, uh, Socorro Middle School serves uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. We're, we're one of the smaller middle schools. We have about 600 students. Um, you know, we, we range, we're a very traditional middle school. We are in an area where we do have a high uh, poverty rate. Um, most of our kids, about 93% of our students are economically disadvantaged. So, you know, there, there are a lot more needs than just the educational needs our kids have. You know, we definitely have a social and economic um, aspect to our campus that we definitely need to address. Uh, which we do and that's one of the biggest things that we always have discussions with teachers in regards to building good relationships with our students because without that then the academic piece is not gonna it's not gonna work you know no matter if we have best practices instruction resources uh, it won't work if we don't build that good relationship with our students and, and meet their social and uh, emotional needs first um, this year we started the Win Academy at our campus, which has been an extraordinary experience. We're the only middle school that, that has Win Academy. There's a total of 10 campuses, nine elementaries, and we're the only middle school. Hmm. So right now we have sixth grade, we have two cohorts, and they're a great group of kids, you know, and we've seen great and immense growth with them. More importantly, the biggest thing is their confidence. Um, because their confidence and they feel that they're being really cared for and uh, their, um, their learning is being tailored to them, I think they're, they're building that confidence and obviously in, in turn, we are, we're seeing their academic growth. So they're very excited to continue the Win Academy next year. Uh, none of them wanna leave the Win Academy, which is great. <laughs> That's a huge retention. We have a great support from our parents in the Win Academy. So we're excited because now we're gonna have two more sections of Win next year. So next year, we're gonna now have two sections of seventh, which our kids are gonna uh, loop over. And then we're gonna have two new sections of sixth grade Win. So we're pretty excited. So we're gonna have four sections. We'll be the only middle school that now has four sections, but we now have three other middle schools that will have a sixth grade cohort, mm. which will be great because now those individuals uh, will have the opportunity to collaborate and plan with other WIN teachers. Versus this year, unfortunately, our WIN teachers were able to um, collaborate with other WIN teachers, but nobody else was doing middle school. So it was very unique to them and it was very unique to our, our community. Uh, at the beginning, a lot of parents you know, were unsure. They weren't sure if that's what they wanted for their son or daughter because it's not a, a traditional setting. You know, It's a very unique blended instruction setting. But it's parents, even after a couple of weeks, they realized how beneficial the program would be to their kids. So if I could have my whole campus be a Win Academy, then <laughs> that would be ideal. But I mean, realistically, it's very costly, but you know, it's, it, it's gonna be worth it because what we're doing is we're really closing that achievement gap. So we know that already this year alone, we've already um, had some great successes. So I can just imagine, you know, two years from now, how that's gonna really look at. You mentioned blended learning. What, yes. uh... so, the way blended learning is one, students have a device. Every student has an electronic device. And what I mean by blended learning is that not all their learning is very traditional where it's paper-based, notebook-based. A lot of it's done also on the computer. So kids um, do some learning through some apps, through some websites, 
We also have Thrive, uh, which is our um, electronic version of a textbook. So mm -hmm. they do their learning on Thrive curriculum, they submit work through Thrive, and they get instant feedback. So if they get something incorrect, it will already show them that they got it incorrect. Um, and it's been great because now students can communicate with their teacher through the computer. You know, they're sending emails to, to her or to them actually when they're out, which um, it's, it's been great, you know, because they can do it at home and they get that instant feedback from their teachers. Um, have you heard of the growth mindset, mindset versus fixed mindset? Yes, sir. And I think that in itself is, I, in the past, those kids had a fixed mindset. Mm -hmm. They thought, well, I'm never going to be successful. There's nothing that anybody can do for me to um, become a, a better student. And I think now they've, they've acknowledged the fact that they're, they do have a growth mindset and that people do believe in them and now they're believing in themselves. So um, aside from the technology and the training and the, the extended day that they actually have as well, the one thing that they repeatedly discuss is about what is their favorite thing about WIN? And I'm gonna say 99% of the kids, they're gonna say the teachers. So that goes back into what I had mentioned earlier about relationships. So um, since I started in, in December of 2014, that's been my biggest push since the very beginning is building relationships, building relationships. So, and I, I model that myself. You know, I, I do that myself when I when I meet with parents, when I meet with students, when um, I have conversations with teachers, when we have our weekly uh, professional learning community meetings. We talk about that on a very regular basis. We talk about building relationships. What are some of the strategies you use to help your teachers develop those relationships? Is there any well, thing you're doing? Uh, one of the strategies that we use is the Oreo cookie method, which is we always start with something very positive when we have a conversation with a student or with a teacher, but more importantly, when the teachers are having conversations with a student or with a parent about progress, we always start with something positive saying, you know what, um, I'm very glad that I have your son or daughter in my class. Mm. Um, they're, they're working very hard, but we are really struggling with maintaining um, their organization and their notebook, or we're having an issue with them not turning in work but I know that your son or daughter, they, they have the capability. They, they have the potential to do great things. So that in itself shows the parents that you do care, that you're gonna do a little tough love, which we, we use a lot at our campus, uh, <clears throat> but that you are not already having that negative um, outlook that they're not capable of doing it. So that in itself is probably the biggest thing is you know, maintaining conversations in a very positive manner. Have, have made a huge difference. And I always tell everybody, because I do that myself, is all about approach. So if you approach it very positive, in a positive manner, you're gonna get the same response. You know, if you're aggressive or if you're being negative about their son or daughter or the situation, then that's the type of response you're gonna get back from. What, what's your toughest challenge? What keeps you up at night? Toughest challenge is, for me personally, I think, am I doing enough? You know, we, we already do so much on our campus and we're always busy. You know, we, we have after school tutorials, we have Saturday school, we have sports, we have clubs, organization, you know. And one thing is, it, it, am I providing everything that's necessary? So I, you know, I have conversations with kids, I have conversations with teachers, and I try to get as much feedback as possible, and that's the way um, I, I grow as a professional. So as much as I give feedback to teachers and students, I expect the same from them, you know, because that's really what, what makes us a better campus and a school community. Um, so I think just me going through my head and really think about, am I doing enough? You know, what else can I do? And, but of course not being over ambitious because sometimes when we have too much in our plate, then we have a bit of a disaster. So we try to prevent that. Um, so we try to build on ready systems that we have put in place. Um, so one thing is listening to the kids and teachers more elective choices. So that's what we did this year. We added more electives. We hired um, a part-time, a half-time theater arts teacher because we didn't have theater arts on our campus. And we brought on uh, a half-time band director because we really want to build on the fine arts. You know, sometimes we just focus so much on the core content mm -hmm. and we really forget about the electives because that's really the, the outlet for kids. 
And then uh, what we're doing next year is we're going to have our Spanish teacher be full time as well as our robotics teacher be full time so we can embed the computer science now because our biggest push is making sure that we have our kids be more college and career ready. So if we're saying it, then what are we doing on our campus to put that foundation for them? So um, that's definitely one of the things. So I'm, I'm, we're slowly embedding it, you know, 